ButterDocs has completely transformed the way that I write, replacing both Google Docs and Scrivener. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to my new favorite writing tool. In this video, I'll walk you through why I love ButterDocs, show you some of its standout features, and give you an exclusive look at how it's helping me craft the next book in the Shadows Creed saga. Before I get into the video, I thought it might be helpful if I let you know what I'm looking for in a writing software, just so you know if ButterDocs might be something that you also would like. So the most important thing for me when I'm writing is I need the ability to move and shuffle things around. If you've used Google Docs, you might already know that it's not a very easy program to move things around, so I very rarely draft anything other than short stories and I never have in the past. It's always just been short stories, and I did write my novella in there, which only had about six or seven chapters, and it wasn't the huge headache that my normal book is. I'm gonna show you what my normal process is in a second, so you'll could actually see that. I also really just, I need something that's gonna contain my disorganization since I write as things come to me. I pants things, I'm a discovery writer, I write stream of conscious, whichever term you want to use. So I need something that can help organize the mess but also not impede me from being able to freely write how I like to write. Another thing I really like is color coding and when I do get to restructuring and editing my book and after I'm done writing it, I really like to be able to color code things. Um, this is especially true for like chapters. If I can distinguish which ones are good to go or which ones need to be re-edited or which ones need to be written completely over again, that really helps me when I'm going through and polishing up my draft. So I like colors. I am a visual person. I really like just seeing things in different colors to know where I'm headed. I've also really gotten used to using cloud-based software recently, so I really wanted something that I could access from my laptop and my desktop, and I just also really like the security of having something saved automatically to the cloud, so I don't have to worry about saving and power outages or something happening as I'm drafting. Finally, this is a wish list item for me. I've always wanted to be able to write and edit in the same program. And previously, I have not been able to do that. So this summer, I'm actually gonna be taking my documents and I'm gonna be working with my editor in this and we're gonna see if this will work for me. So with that aside, I'm going to show you guys book four that is a mess. Please excuse the mess, but I will go ahead and show you that. So this is the ButterDocs dashboard. You have easy access to all of your book files and documents right over here on the right. And then you have the option to organize them in folders or you can star certain projects to pull them out. I'll go ahead and show you my projects file. This is the Shadows Creed Saga where I have two of my books actually, both being written and worked on at the same time. So this project file is well over 200,000 words. It originally started at 260,000. Down here you can see the um, word count. So I I've cut about 50,000 already and this program has been able to keep up with me. It hasn't slowed down at all, which is great. I tried this program about a year ago when it was announced because I originally learned about it because the people that make ButterDocs created Arc Studio and I used that to do a screenplay and I really, really liked the way that it wrote. It was very streamlined and I loved the interface. So I was really curious about what they were gonna do. So last year when I tried to copy and paste and import book four from Scrivener, it was a little slow. I'm happy to report it has been able to keep up with me. Nothing slowed down while I'm copying and pasting. It just takes a little bit at the beginning, which is completely understandable. It's syncing things and fetching it from the cloud. So this is my first chapter of my book. And over here on the left, you can see the table of contents. And one of the first things you'll notice, and one of my favorite things is the status icon. It, you can color code it. They just recently added this where you can create custom statuses. And I also have to say, I really like ButterDocs' customer service. I had an issue, it was a bug where the statuses weren't staying. So I emailed them and about three days later, I could tell when I opened it up that they were working on it because this red dot is a custom status for me. And I was trying to edit my chapter. So things I need to add to, I put this rad status bar. Uh, and when I was doing the different statuses, it was disappearing. 
And then a couple days later, it was stayed there. So I was really excited that they worked on it. It took them like maybe a week to get it fixed. I'm so excited because they really, really needed that function. Uh, as you can see, I have a lot of chapters in this book. So just being able to color code things is very beneficial for me. In the past, I have uh, put add here, which I started doing when I was having issues with the status not being able to change. I would just write add or write that I still needed to write. But now you can see the set status. I have different options. I'm still kind of fine tuning what I want to call them and what the colors I want. So it's not a perfect system yet. It's probably going to take me until when I go back to book five to kind of perfect it. And once I kind of get something going, I'll show you just so you can maybe adapt and use stuff for your own, um, for your own writing. So over here is where all of my chapters are. And you might have noticed that there are some of these blocks that have this gray text. So ButterDocs uses things where they put blocks in text. Uh, let me just jump down. <laughs> So if you're reading my series, this might be slight spoilers. So um, just caution, there might be some spoilers. So these blocks, you can see I highlight this and this section over here will actually become a slightly lighter gray. So ButterDocs works in blocks. So you'll write in a block and then you can take that block and you can move it. So basically the same thing like how scenes function uh, in Scrivener is how they function in this. And then these would be basically kind of like your folders if you're kind of moving from Scrivener. For me, these gray ones aren't officially named. They kind of live here. Uh, they're in limbo right now is what they are for me. So anything that's not white is kind of something I want in there, but I don't know where it's going to fit. And uh, you can see add somewhere right there. Uh, so you can see that does there. This right here is really cool. So this is the commenting function in ButterDocs and they show up as these little circles. And what I use my comments for right now is I'm going through my books and I wanna just check to make sure that what I am referring to is accurate. So when I'm writing, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, this might not be the best way to do it. I'll use my best knowledge, my best guess if something is right. And then I will later check it when I'm editing and I'll put check, is this accurate? You know, blah, blah, blah. Did this person do that? And so you can see these little comments that will appear. This is where I'm hoping that the comments will work really well for editing. You can assign uh, the comments to another person. So I can actually put the comments to my editor and be like, can you double check this? And then it will show up on her uh, queue to kind of take care of. This is something I really like. You can sort of do this in Google Docs as well, but again, I am personally looking for a program where I can write and edit in at the same time. Google Docs doesn't do that for me, neither does Scrivener. So Another really cool feature is being able to move things to what ButterDocs calls the stash. And the stash exists over here on this little menu. And you can see that I have been adding stuff here. Uh, this is basically just text that doesn't belong in my book, but I still want to keep it and hold on to it. And I actually cut uh, a couple of chapters from my book uh, right here. This is an entire chapter that just is existing out of here because I didn't want it in my table of contents. So I moved that into my stash and it's really easy to do. You can just hit this stash button, select it, and then it will move into the stash. If you made a mistake, you can just hit control Z and then it will replace itself. <laughs> Let me go and find where we were just so you can see. There it is. Okay, that was the section I put in my stash. Sometimes it jumps up to the front of the document, other times it won't move me out of there. Just to show you how easy it is to move things around, if you left click on one of your chapters, you can see it's going to move down in my table of contents. If I just let go of it and give it a minute, it's going to change and swap itself down. Another really cool function is 
you can look at all of your comments up here. You see, you can see all the sections that I'm talking to myself right now since I am doing my edits. You can look through all of your comments here. So the notes section is an easy way to kind of put like your notes. So you can put like your editing notes to yourself next to it. You could also put like your research material if you're writing historical fiction or if you're doing a blog post or something that needs to do research. So right next to each of these, um, for me, my chapters, if you hit this little note section, it's gonna pop open a note here and you can actually start adding to it. You can see that I have a chapter summary here over on the right hand side, which is good because it helps keep my word count down. I'm try trying to cut things from my book so it fits into one volume. So I'm trying to be ruthless when I'm cutting things. So this is one of the ways I'm trying to keep a more accurate word count. This is where my chapter summary is going. If I wanted to leave myself like editing notes, I could be like, um, combine this with chapter five, blah, 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 um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's another way to use this. I think that's a really cool feature because it lives right next to your chapter here. And to close that, you can just close let me delete this. To close that, you can just hit the little X here and it'll close down. You can get back to your contents over here. And if you wanted to just go through your notes here, you can see I have left myself ideas for what the plot of book four is because that's me. Um, and some random dialogue, uh, just some ideas I had. And then you can pull them up over here. You can refer to them. If you are somebody that likes to plan, you can actually highlight this and turn it into a block. So that'll actually make a block where you can write a scene essentially and then move it around. I do wanna show you the outlining. If you go up here to outline, if you are an outliner, you can put all of your chapters up here. You can write uh, what you want to on notes so that it'll appear under here. If you originally had built this in this outline section, it would be a lot more organized for me. I just kind of add blocks wherever in my writing section. So it tends to get a bit messy for me. So don't pay any attention to this. This is not, it exists. That's all I basically wanted to show you is it exists. You can see that these columns are not working how they should. Um, you can just move it to a new column. That just makes it a little bit easier to move them around in your main draft. So before I really overload you with all the features, I know I'm going really fast. I just wanted to do kind of like a quick, here's what I'm using, here's some exciting features, just as another option if you want to explore something other than Google Docs or Scrivener. I will do a video that actually walks through the process of writing a book. There was one other really cool thing that I wanted to share, and that is what is called branching. So you can take a new branch, edit block in branch copy. You can do it with private copy or share it with others. This is going to keep your original draft intact and allow you to kind of play with things. So if you wanted to uh, cut out like the middle part, you can do a new branch copy and it'll keep it separate and you can reject all of those uh, copies. Let's actually do one. Preparing a copy. Because one of the things I was trying to do is I wanted to audit this program to see if it was going to work because I was debating on whether to use this or Dabble uh, as a secondary contender. But I liked this one for the editing functionality. So this has opened up a new branch for me so I can work on this with my edits and it's not going to do anything to my original. So um, this is for the video as an example and you can go up here to changes. You can turn off the changes if you don't wanna see what is new. You can also see uh, your editor's changes in a different color. If you are done with your editing, you can merge the two copies together. So once I am done doing all of my edits for my editor, I will merge them into the chapter because there's no reason for me to have two different copies. I didn't even show you how to write. Let's just, since this is a branch copy, I can do anything I want. This is a, paragraph uh, and there are words and then you can do another thing and it's going to automatically just show you what is happening and if you wanted to change these into different headings so these chapters are headings you have the ability to add a 
another heading here. You just left click. And I really enjoy how intuitive and simple the interface is, but I also enjoy that you can get to the more advanced functions just by clicking on the different paragraphs. And one of the things I've been really enjoying is, you know how much I like color, so you can actually highlight here and it'll show this menu here. Here's all of your highlighting colors that you can highlight your heart's content like me and you can go back you can do italics and you can also strike through text i love that that's in the menu and it's really easy to get to again you can put things in your stash you can um, visit revision marks you can copy this allows you to insert a footnote if you are writing a historical comment or also just to add a comment right here <laughs> blotch blotch blah Hopefully, I'm gonna pause there because as you can see, this is a very simplistic program on the surface, but it has the capabilities of doing something really cool and it's a lot more functionality than Google Docs, which is what I was personally looking for. And I really didn't want Scrivener. It seems a little bit old school. I wanted something a little bit more modern with a little bit more cool features. And I really, really have been enjoying this program. So. If you too are also maybe exploring your options about where to write your book, ButterDocs might be an option for you. If you are looking for some videos just on how to help you keep writing, you might enjoy one of these videos. If not, I will be back again with another video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again all in the next one. Bye.